Okay, let's continue with code processing. I would start with a Cortex M4 project. So this is this main.c file. Just to remind you, if uh, I would uh, select this link with editor, uh, then I can switch uh, quite easily between uh, sources of both uh, projects and I got better visibility. Okay, so Cortex M4 at the beginning. Uh, so we will start uh, Mm, with uh, some definitions. Uh, we need to define mm, the hardware semaphore ID, which we will use. It will be uh, the same for both cores. Uh, I would use hardware semaphore ID 9. Then we can specify as well the process ID, which would be used to take the semaphore. This process uh, ID is not necessary if uh, we are operating between both cores and uh, there would be single processes at in one core and the, the second one. This process ID is important if uh, you've got multiple processes uh, within one core or uh, between both cores. Uh, in this case, it is important to indicate which process uh, has taken the, the semaphore and uh, has right to release it. In our case, uh, uh, I would just specify it to demonstrate how we can use it, but it is not necessary. Okay, uh, define um, hardware semaphore process and uh, I would use number four. Okay, uh, then I would uh, declare the simple variable which would be used to indicate whether uh, there was uh, there was an interrupt triggered by hardware semaphore. Uh, so this uh, flag would be set with a hardware semaphore interrupt, which would unblock the process uh, taking of the, of the hardware semaphore from main while one loop. Okay, so those are the variables we will use at the moment. Uh, then uh, within main, main uh, function, we can see that we are activating the GPIOs, USART, and then we are booting CPU2, so our Cortex M0 Plus. Within this section, or just before it, we can activate interrupts uh, for hardware semaphore uh, for selected semaphores, because we can use more than one semaphores and we can specify which of those would generate an interrupt. We've got only one semaphore but we would like to have interrupts coming from this semaphore as well. This is why I would use a hardware abstraction layer library function. So h a l underscore hardware semaphore underscore. And now if I would press control space, I can see all of the functions available for this module. The function we would like to use is this first one, activate notification. It is uh, requiring the argument, it is the semaphore mask uh, so it is uh, specifying which uh, semaphores will activate the interrupt. Okay, so just to set this, this mask, I can use the macro hardware abstraction layer underscore hardware semaphore underscore control space semaphore ID to mask. And now we can put our hardware semaphore ID as an argument. Okay, after this operation, our semaphore, hardware semaphore number nine will generate the interrupts once it will be released. Okay, let's uh, continue with, uh, with the next operation. So now we will uh, process uh, the call to within while one loop. So within this while one loop, we would like to periodically send uh, some data Mm, over USART2. This USART2 is already configured within this uh, Cortex M4, and we should remember that uh, mm, we've got one USART2 and two cores. So this hardware semaphore number nine will guard the unique access to this USART2. So at the beginning, we would like to take the semaphore. If it will be successful operation, we would like to send the data over USART2. If not, we would like to wait for availability of this uh, hardware semaphore to send our data. I would start uh, from 
trial of taking the semaphore. So for this we are using hardware uh, HAL underscore hardware semaphore underscore and it would be um, it would be take function and now semaphore ID in our case it will be hardware semaphore um, and it will be our definition so it's ID yes and the process ID it was hardware semaphore process okay so this is the function and we will continue only in a case uh, if the return value of this function will be hello k hello k means that it was possible to take this semaphore so after this function uh, the semaphore 9 would be filled in with the core id of cortex m4 as we are within the cortex m4 in part uh, the process id would be filled with number 4 and log bit would be set so in such a case we will clear our status flag it will be rather for next iterations of this operation uh, then what we need to do is to disable uh, the interrupt uh, hardware semaphore disable the interrupt just in case that we will not uh, take uh, the semaphore for the second time just after release it uh, so those uh, two lines would be important in next uh, iterations not the first one but the next iterations of this of this loop and now the main operation we would like to f to, to do uh, within this uh, uh, if loop it would be sending the data sending the data over the word so hal underscore uart underscore control space and we would like to send something so it will be t transmit transmit uh, so we've got only one uart so this would be this handler and the data um, would send some string uh, so as it is cortex m4 so i would use cm4 and uh, carriage return and new line then the number of the data six and timeout so how much time you would like to try to perform this operation so 200 milliseconds after this just after this operation we would uh, uh, release the hardware semaphore for this we've got hardware semaphore release uh, function it is a very similar one it has exactly the same arguments uh, so semaphore id and uh, semaphore process it is important to use the same arguments because uh, the semaphore must be released by the same uh, process which took it so uh, we need to have the same arguments so the semaphore id a core id and process id to release the semaphore uh, i described it already more in details in the theoretical slides okay so this is uh, the situation when it was possible to take the semaphore now let's uh, perform some additional coding when it will be not possible to take the semaphore so the semaphore has been already taken by the other core what we need to do in the in such a case mm, so the first thing uh, would be to enable the interrupts uh, for the semaphore to have uh, information about semaphore release after this we can wait in the loop waiting for the uh, semaphore status uh, setting so as we discussed uh, already the semaphore status has been cleared and it's cleared at the beginning and uh, within our interrupt from from hardware semaphore which is triggered once the semaphore is released this semaphore underscore status variable is set so once this variable would be set it will be possible for us to go out 
of this else condition and try once again to take the semaphore. Okay, after this, uh, just not to make too quick message uh, flow on the terminal, we will just delay the process using standard HAL delay function with 1000 milliseconds as an argument. Okay, so concerning uh, while one loop, this is the complete coding. What we need to do now is to implement this hardware semaphore interrupt uh, callback. The place for this, uh, the ideal place for this is uh, user code 4 within main.c file. Uh, how we can find the name of this, uh, of this callback? We can go uh, to this it.c IT file, so the interrupt um, file, and at the end we should see this hardware uh, semaphore IRQ handler, which is generated automatically by QBMX or QPIDE tools, as uh, this interrupt has been enabled. If I would go to the definition of this uh, function, uh, so not header, but the definition. So I would just copy and try to open hardware semaphore over here. So we can see that in case of hardware semaphore, we will have this free callback. This free callback uh, is declared as a weak, so we can copy it uh, to our code. over here and we can implement it. What we need to do uh, here is to set our variable to one. Uh, so this is uh, the simplest method. Uh, of course uh, it could be it would be good to to check uh, whether uh, this uh, semaphore mask is in line with our settings so we may guard it by this uh, sem mask which is an argument and uh, we can verify whether it is in line with our settings uh, so this is hull underscore hardware semaphore underscore semaphore id and uh, our has hardware semaphore id over here and in case uh, it would be not zero so there would be something uh, in fact uh, our semaphore id would be set there uh, the semaphore status would be set so this is all coding concerning Cortex M4. Now we will uh, continue with Cortex M0 plus uh, code modifications. Okay, before we will con continue with Cortex M0 uh, M plus, I can just save this uh, main.c file from Cortex M4. And I will switch to main.c file from Cortex M0 uh, plus. Okay, the beginning would be uh, very similar, so we need to define exactly the same uh, semaphore ID and process ID. To be able to take uh, the, the same semaphore using using different core. Please remember that uh, the hardware semaphore registers are common for both cores. So uh, we are operating on them on one core and the second core, uh, but we should remember that there is one common set of registers which are accessible by both cores. Uh, next uh, point uh, is a private variable. We will use exactly the same 8-bit one, but it will be the same naming, but it is, it is uh, a uh, different variable because it is global variable from Cortex M0 plus memory area uh, status and we will clear it then uh, we will go directly into main uh, uh, function 
And what we need to do within this user code begin, uh, please have a look that here is much more simpler. Uh, we are activating only HAL init. Uh, there is no clock configuration because it is already done within Cortex M4. And Cortex M4 is activating the Cortex M0 plus. Uh, so what we need to do here is um, activate uh, the uh, hardware semaphore. Uh, sorry, uh, sem uh, activate uh, the interrupts like it was done. Uh, it has been done within a Cortex M4. So to be HAL hardware semaphore hardware semaphore ID semaphore ID. Sorry, sem ID to mask and our uh, hardware semaphore underscore ID, not IDE, but ID. And I need a second bracket. And that's it. Okay, the second point uh, is very important due to the fact that uh, above course we'll use USART2. But USART2 is already initialized by uh, Cortex M4. And uh, as we are using hardware abstraction layer, and hardware abstraction layer is using handlers, uh, so the structures which are filled within the parameters of the um, of the of the peripheral, uh, we need to uh, specify some basic settings for the handler within Cortex M0 Plus code as well. Uh, as we can see above in the code, there is already the handler definition. And what we need to do within this uh, user code 2 section, so before main while one loop, we need to field the uh, basic settings of this of this handler of this structure, and uh, it should be instance, and the instance should be set to usert to. And the next point uh, would be uh, to set uh, tx and rx uh, to non-busy initial state to allow us to send some data to the user using hardware abstraction layer functions. To do this, uh, uh, we will use uh, uart check and it will be this argument. If you would uh, check for example, uart init function, which is uh, used to within Cortex M4 core, you will see exactly this function, check idle state, uh, run there after the initialization. It is uh, giving you then access to the uart and uh, it is uh, allowing you let's say, to send and receive the data after proper initialization. Okay, after this uh, process, we may continue with our main while one loop. So it will be exactly the same coding like within Cortex M4. So I would just copy uh, the content of it from this place. The only difference would be that it will be Cortex M0 plus and I need to change it to 7 because I add one sign. Okay, so we've got the um, while one loop programmed and the same story would be with this uh, callback. So I would come back to main.c file from Cortex M4 and I would just copy this part. After this operation, I would save it so the coding process is uh, done. Now I can build uh, the complete project. Uh, just to have a uh, mm, out more automatic build process, uh, I would highlight my, my Cortex M0 Plus project. I would click right button on mouse and select the properties. And within properties, I would go to a project references and I would select this Cortex uh, M4 uh, part. When I will do it, uh, prior the build of Cortex M0 Plus, Cortex M4 code would be built automatically. So now uh, I can press 
keeping this uh, Cortex Miro Plus uh, project highlighted, I can press this hammer to build the project. In fact, both projects. Okay. We can see some errors. So let's try to let's try to fix them. Most probably there is no N at the end. And the same story would be in this code. Okay, now uh, it should be okay. So let's come back and try once again. Okay, now we can see some warnings. But those are not, uh, let's say, the blocking ones, so we can continue with, um, with the investigations. In next part, we will uh, run a debug session and check whether everything is working uh, correctly. Thank you for watching this video.